Evergreen Cemetery here in Southgate, Kentucky, which is located just right south of Newport. This cemetery has a lot of history. A Civil War vet, the guy who built Bent Springs Bridge, which is named after him. And at one time there was a hill that was used during the American Civil War to put a battery so encroaching troops couldn't come up the far north to Cincinnati to try to call you. Anyway, join me on this tour of this huge cemetery. And I do mean huge cemetery. As we not only talk about historical figures, but we're gonna stop and look at some gravestones, some unique gravestones and decorated stones. Gotta include those individuals as well as the historical side. All right, so join me. Let's get this graveyard tour started, shall we? And if you notice, there's a lot of old tombstones up here, headstones, monuments. This is the oldest part of the cemetery, I believe. And when it tells you it has metal on the window, you know. Uh, it's a chapel. It's part of that whole funeral. More likely. Just funeral. Right. And this is the crypts. Uh, the head of the Lord that put their niche urns. You got some seating right here. More seating on this side. Alright, fast fact. Evergreen Cemetery was established in 1847. And it was the largest cemetery in Campbell County, Kentucky. And the largest in Kentucky. So this is a huge, huge cemetery. Major David Lynch, September 11th, 1753 to November 9th, 1794. David Lynch was born in Glasgow, Scotland, immigrated to America at an early age and served in the colonial militia during the Revolutionary War where he attained the rank of major. After the war, he purchased 33,000 acres in the Campbell County area and is today known as Wilder. Highland Heights, Cold Spring, Grants Lick, and Southern Kitten County. He found the Lynch's station on the Licking River near Newport and was delegate to Kentucky's first constitutional convention. When he died, his wife, Kentura Moss Lynch, inherited all the land and his estate. This is uh, Major David Lynch and Kentura Moss Lynch. Taylor Harris, I guess it's her daughter. Uh, James Taylor. Abert. Infant Abert. And Ian Taylor. Memory of Major David Lynch. This is Brigadier General George Baird Hodge. George Hodge was born in Fleming County, Kentucky, and attended the U.S. Naval Academy. He was promoted to a lieutenant but resigned his commission to become an attorney and a member of the Kentucky State Legislature. He joined the Confederate Army as a private in 1861. He was soon chosen to represent Kentucky in the Provincial Confederate Congress and in the First Confederate Congress. He was promoted to Captain and Assistant Adjutant General to the First Kentucky Brigade. Then he was promoted to Major of Gallantry at the Battle of Shiloh. In 1865, his commission as Brigadier General was approved. After the Civil War, he continued to law practice in Newport and was a member of the Kentucky State Senate from 1873 to 1877. He died and was buried in 1892 in Florida, where he had moved to become an orange farmer. He was reinterred here in 1903. Yes, the fact about Kentucky during that time, we did have both sides fighting on each side, Union and Confederate. So yeah, he was a Confederate. Maybe he had a different meaning. Or maybe he had a calling, I guess. Wow. William Hornsfall. William Hornsfall ran away from home and became a drummer in the Civil War. He hitched a ride on the steamship Annie Lorry, which was docked in Newport. When he was just 15, he received the Medal of Honor for saving the life of a high-ranking Union officer at the Siege of Corinth. He served in the Army until March of 1866 and lived the rest of his life in Newport. William Horsfall, March 3, 1847, October 22, 1922. And here he is, William H. Hornsfall, Medal of Honor 
drummer, Company G1, Kentucky Infantry, March 3rd, 1847, passed away August, October 22nd, 1922. I hope I pronounced that name right. Is it Horns Fail or Horns Fall? Uh, either way, it's Horns Fall. I'll just say, hey, rest in peace. Let's continue the next uh, section. You know, we just looked at a Confederate general and a Union drummer boy, Medal of Honor. Like I said, Kentucky had its own split, just like the country did in that, that time of history. Yep, Civil War Union, Civil War Southern. Is uh, his plaque? This is James Taylor Jr. 1749, 1848. This large monument. That's going to be up on top of the hill. At the top of the hill is a memorial to James Taylor Jr. He arrived in Newport in 1792 and laid out the town of Newport. He was the excurator ex of his friend David Lynch's estate, and he later married Lynch's widow, Katura. He helped move the military post from Cincinnati to Newport and later became a breeder general in a Kentucky militia during the War of 1812. We got another war. He was said to be one of the wealthiest men in the state. At the time of his death, having operated ferries, saw our grist mills, banks, and other businesses. The Taylor Mansion is located on 335 East 3rd Street in Newport. James Taylor, born in Caroline County, Virginia. Wow. Very impressive monument. Very impressive. And here it is. All right, Brent Spence, and if you know that name, if you're a native of Kentucky, Indiana, Ohio, you know who this guy is. Ben Spence, a Newport native attorney, banker, and Democratic congressman, was one of the oldest members to serve in the House of Representatives. During his tenure, Spence cleared, chaired the U.S. House Banking and Currency Committee, and he helped to create the International Monetary Fund and Bank. He sponsored the Export Import Federal Deposit Insurance Act. He was so influential in the community that Brent Sprint's Bridge was named after him. Yep. Bridge is named after him and the cross is between Covington and Cincinnati. Ben Sprint's Bridge. He was born December 24, 1874, passed away September 18th, 1967. All right, that was quick. Here we are. Ben Spence, December 24th, 1874 to September 18th, 1967. The bridge between Ohio and Kentucky is named after him. All right. Notice look at all these crypts. We're going down here in a second. Look out. All right, Samuel. Big staff, December 1st, 1845, passed away August 18th, 1912. Here, as a 17-year-old Confederate soldier, Sam, Samuel Big, Big Staff was taken prisoner by the Union Army and brought to Newport. However, he was charming, outgoing, and smart. After his release, he married Mary Ellis Webster, daughter of the prominent Newport attorney. He became one of the most respected men in Northern Kentucky. He convinced General Sheridan to build a post in Fort Thomas and to move the Newport barracks there. He helped expand the streetcar lines to connect Northern Kentucky with Cincinnati and had a hand in the Central and Storeway, Shortway Bridge projects. He developed several hotels and a golf course in Fort Thomas that contributed to the growth of Newport, Bellevue, and Fort Thomas. Go down the hill here. Say he's in tune with what? And look at those steps. Oh yeah. Grab a hold. Hope nothing bites me. Uh, uh. Car go by. Alright, F.M. Webster, Family Tomb, A.D. 1866. That's, as you can tell, it's uh, concreted up, which I don't blame them. Going in there, you know, it would be not a very good thing. And they're in there resting in peace, so let's move on. Now this one. It says Klein. And it too has been sealed shut. Sealed shut. Let's see if we can look in. I'll 
don't know if you can see anything. Oh, you can feel the coldness. It's up the other side. idea. Oh, we don't drop it. Oh, okay, that's about it. Let's head down to the next one. Hey look, you even got vents to set out. Cool. Boil. And these are doors. And my guess is these are metal doors. And it's got a master lock. So yeah. We'll be able to get in there. All right, let's head over to that last one. Then we'll head back to my car and continue the tour, shall we? This was uh, Dameron WKMA. It has also been sealed up with concrete, which is understandable. Let's go up here and see inside. There it is. I think it's been open. Look at that. Doesn't like it's been open to you. Now let's go to the other side and take a look. There's what it looks like. It's been sealed up and uh yeah a lot of vandals. Over the years I guess rock and stone been dropping from the ceiling. So one more time on the other side. I don't fall bust my butt. Yeah. Looks like wood. Oh, that's concrete. And somebody dropped a hammer. There's a hammer in there, see? What well, a hammer being there for a long time, if not forever. Alright. Right now we're over top of it. What's in here? Anything down there? I can't see. So maybe I'll see anything. My guess is that's an air shaft. It has to be. All right, let's head back to the car and let's continue this tour, shall we? This is Richard Southgate. Richard Southgate, a lawyer, came to Newport in 1795. He was appointed Commonwealth Attorney for Campbell County in 1798, voted state representative in 1803, and served as state, state senator from 1817 to 1821. The city of Southgate was named for him. At one time, he owned almost all of its land. He and his family also operated a health spa called Southgate's Mineral Wells. And his son-in-law, Dr. Nathan Nathaniel Berger Shaler, was the surgeon at Newport Barracks. The historic Southgate house still stands across from Newport on the levee. And that's his monument. Look how big it is. Next stop is George and Charles Wiedemann. George Wiedemann was born in Germany. He came to the United States at age 19 in 1853. After working at breweries in New York, Louisville, and Cincinnati, he opened the Wine Demon Brewery in Newport. When George died in 1890, his was the last, largest brewery in the state. His business was taken over by his sons, Charles and George Jr. The brewery closed during Prohibition, then reopened, and by 1967, it was produced almost a million barrels per year. It was sold to the Heilman Brewery Company, which closed in 1983. This is George Riemann's tomb. That's M. Dory. May 11, 1969, September 21st, 1906. Thomas M. Dollery was born in Ireland and immigrated to the United States at age 16. He became a U.S. citizen and enlisted in the 21st Infantry of the U.S. Army at age 22 and was stationed at Plattsburgh's Barracks. During the Spanish-American War, Dollery was awarded the Medal of Honor on June 22, 1899. He was honored after the Battle of Santiago, better known as the Battle of San Juan Hill, because he rescued the wounded in the first lines under heavy enemy fire. He later fought in three expeditions during the Philippine insurrection in Manila. Eventually, he became part of the 4th Infantry in Fort Thomas. Unfortunately, he became seriously depressed and ended up taking his own life in 1906. Well, here's Thomas M. Doherty, Medal of Honor, Drum Major, Company H, 4 U.S. Infantry. 
Spanish American War. Uh, May 11th, 1869, passed away September 21st, 1906. He uh, took his own life. So basically, what we call PTSD Day, it was probably called a thousand mile stare or shell shock. So it proves that no matter what century our wars happen, the results are still the same, those who survive it. That was Thomas M. Doherty. Get back in and continue. I was driving by and I saw this. What the hell is that? Right there. Gravity must have did that. The weather and the hill. Being on a hill, that kind of sucks. All right, where we're at right now, the Sailor Battery and the Black Brigade. In 1862, they began marching towards Cincinnati. Union General Lee Wallace called for white volunteers in Cincinnati to build defenses, but few answered the call. On September 2nd, Provost Guards abducted black men from their homes and forced them to march across the Ohio River into Northern Kentucky to build defenses for Cincinnati there. Abolitionists and the press were outraged. Judge William Dickerson was appointed colonel to solve the problem. He freed 400 black men held captive in Fort Mitchell and said they would come back home back if they wanted to volunteer. The next day, 700 black volunteers showed up. The volunteers built eight miles of fortresses and roads, including the Shaler Battery. In just 10 days, the volunteers became known as the Black Brigade of Cincinnati. When the Confederates arrived and saw the fortress, they decided not to attack. Many members of the Black Brigade ended up joining other African American regiments to fight for the Union in the Civil War. So yeah. We've read about the Black Brigade before, remember? At the James A. Ramage Civil War Museum, not too far from here. The Memoriam of the Nation's Heroes. Oh yeah, let's take a look inside. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Your bottle of Pepsi. I guess somebody lived in here, I guess. Come on here. That's crazy, man. People do that. Guess I'm gonna need to concrete those up, I guess. Ooh, firewood, I can get close to that. Look in here. There's a sink. It looks like a sink. That's a bathroom. Looks like a bathroom down there. Might be. I guess they closed it off. People are partying in there, I guess. All right. Well, as we we'll make our way to our last tour stop, let's take a look at some of these tombs in my car. Tomlinson, three in there, and Wick, Wickman. Looks like the door's off of here. Huh. Some more. It's uh, Francis. Ooh. You know what? Let's go take a look. Take a look inside. Uh, the door is shut. Of course, uh, there's a few people. Like two, three, like twelve in there. Twelve and okay. Bring a car and continue this tour. All right, our last tour stop. Nelson B. Klein was born in New Jersey. He fought in New York's Fighting 69 or Irish Brigade in World War One. After the war, he became an FBI agent. He was involved in a number of high-profile investigations, including the John Dillinger mob chase and the Alice Berry stole kidnapping in Louisville. He was killed in a line of duty in Indiana when he attempted to arrest George Barrett, a car thief. Klein was able to shoot Barrett in the leg, but not before Barrett wounded him mortally. Barrett was convicted of murder and became the first person to receive the death penalty under the new law passed by Congress that made him it a capital offense to kill an FBI agent. After his original monument, 
toppled and broke, the Cincinnati chapter of former special agents in the Greater Cincinnati Police Museum replaced it with his new stone in 2008. And this grave's right here. Nelson B. A. Klein, special agent, FBI, killed in line of duty August 16, 1935. Fair Bureau investigation. Nelson B. Klein. Let's get out and take a look, shall we? Place to put the flowers. That's all I I'm guessing you can put ashes in this. That's what I'm guessing. That's a squirrel. <laughs> you trying to get in? Well, it'd be easier just to go down the side. Look at it. Huh. Oh, look at this. Grandma. That is good dedication to Nancy, Deborah, Clyde, Carol. Huh. It's all of them. Loving memory of mom. Irene Pipe Smart. Rest in peace. Death leaves heartache no one can heal. Love leaves a memory no one can steal. Beautiful how they got that. That is really beautiful. Wow. Look like an angel. That's an impressive monument. Look behind them. Huh. Got to see these. I guess they go up behind those tomb headstones there, but that's a big monument. For they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God. Luke 20 36. Alright. Gotta fix that. Uh, is he a better? Henry Roger. Okay, hopefully it stays up. There's another one. I guess it, it goes here. Ugh. Got a lot of oh, crap. grass off of it. Right, let's put it back right here. Well, she was a nurse. So, oh, maybe I'll stay there. Okay, that one's back up and that one's back up. Let's continue. And this last crypt we're gonna look at is called Rust. I guess there's room for two. Behind glass. Maybe somebody on top, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> maybe just her. All right, thank you for joining me on this latest cemetery tour, second day, which was supposed to be yesterday, but yeah, that's my fault. I'm staying here because the wind's not hitting very well here. So I want to thank you for watching. If you watched the whole video, and don't forget to take care of yourself, take care of your loved ones, and I will see you on the next video. And all the people here, whether Confederate or Union. World War I, World War II, or any war. Rest in peace. I'll see you next time.